semi-finals day continues here at the Yonix Open Japan. Fans here are loving it. Of course, Kenichi Targo confirmed his place in tomorrow's final in the men's singles. The first ever appearance of a home player in the men's singles final at their home event. All the fans enthralled because there's two courts in action. And I can tell you that there's something rather extraordinary happening on the adjoining court because in the women's single semi-final between the former champion Wang Yi Hun, former world champion, of course, and Olympic silver medalist, she is a game. And 12-1 down against Chida. Well, there is Ladies a possibility please that welcome it could the be an all of Japanese the women's singles final because here has been the story of the tournament. Akane Yamaguchi, the 16-year-old schoolgirl, has come through the qualifying events. This semi-final will be her sixth match this week. She's put out the number eight seed, Pusala Venkata Sindhu, who, of course, won a bronze medal at the recent World Championships. And today, she's up against the defending champion, the number six seed, Tai Su Ying. And, of course, Tai Su Ying, a year ago, broke the hearts of the home fans when she beat Iriko Hirose, who was hoping to become the first ever Japanese winner. Yamaguchi Akane Senshi, Nippon. The semi finalists well, of the women's singles are Akane Yamaguchi for this young lady. representing Japan. Akane Yamaguchi. Tai Tsu Yin Senshi, Chinese Taipei. And Tai Tsu Yin representing Tsu Chinese Taipei. From Chinese Taipei. Shushinwa, Che Je Kun, Kankok. The umpire is Che Je Kun from Korea. Korean umpire. Service judge is Teo Kenju, Malaysia. And, and the, the service, judge service judge is Kenju from to Malaysia. ensure neutrality in this contest. Well, can we actually dream and think that the unbelievable is about to happen? An all Japanese women's singles final? That, of course, would mean that Japan was certain of a title at this year's Yonex Open Japan. My goodness me, wouldn't that be astonishing? The two players unheralded and unseeded at the beginning of the week. And this woman was in the qualifying. What a story, just 16 years of age. And of course, for Tai Su Ying, a year ago at the Japan Open, when she won her first ever Super Series title, she became the youngest ever winner of a Super Series title at the age of 18 years, three months and three days. Of course, that record was overtaken earlier this year by Rachana Kuntanon when she won the India Super Series event. But this is the 16-year-old qualifier, Akane Yamaguchi, from Fukui here in Japan, attends Katsuyama High School. She's been playing badminton since the age of five last year at the World Junior Championship staged here in Japan. She won the silver medal. Her opponent, Tai Su Ying, who is only a youngster herself. She's still a teenager. She's only 19 years of age. Well, she hasn't played against a seeded player all tournament beat Nicole Greta of uh, Denmark uh, in uh, Canada in the first round, Hanley in the second round, and Sayaka Takahashi, the exceptionally talented left-hander from Japan in the third round. She hasn't lost a game so far, Tai Su Ying, for Akane Yamaguchi. Well, she was pushed the full distance in the first round against another qualifier. Mime from Japan. Only two games against the number eight seed uh, PV Sindhu, the World Championship bronze medalist in the second round. 
Kate Yamaguchi on that 21-6, 21-17. Hashimoto 12 and 16. So what a story it's been. Well, yesterday we saw Yamaguchi's father looking a little bit nervous, but also very proud sitting in the crowd. Interestingly, he wasn't sitting next to her mother. They were a couple of places apart, All maybe right, getting a little bit too Obarai. nervous. There he is again. Akane Yamaguchi, Japan. And on my left. Tai Zhein, Chinese Taipei. Tai Zhein to serve. Low ball, play. So the defending champion, the number six seed, Tai Su Ying, in this semi final underway. Well, time is over. One love. Can the dream come true? Rallies are anything to go by? The answer is yes. Nice drop shot from Tai Su Ying. One, two. Well, I've been looking at the statistics on the website. According to them, these two have never met because. So the statistics come from matches in open badminton, senior badminton, that is. But I've been trying to find out whether indeed they met in junior badminton. Nobody's been able to tell me that so far. Gone along. Good judgment by Yamaguchi. Yeah, look, father there. Second row from back. Ah, it's nicely played. Tai Su Ying really is so good. In her ability to move the shuttle around the court uses every inch and all four corners gradually outmaneuvering her opponents. in the world ranking at the moment this young lady in fact went down four places this week she's the 12th ranked Japanese player in the world ranking as far as Japanese singles players are concerned but at the moment she's not reading the deception of the defending champion Wide. Of course, Tai Su Ying, not only the number six seed, but currently number eight in the world ranking. She has been as high as seven. That's gone wide. Well, she was making those yesterday against Yui Hashimoto. the realization of just what she's achieved so far this week has sunk in and is perhaps making her a little nerveless. Played yesterday with absolute freedom. And at the moment, Tai Su Ying is getting the better of her in all departments. Five, eight. No, 
nice idea. Over. Wasn't really behind the shuffle as she played it. That's a lovely play. Good aggression from the Amaguchi. Only had five minutes, and Tai Su Ying already to the mid-game interval with a nice lead, a five-point advantage over the 16-year-old. I remember when Tai Su Ying burst onto the world stage when she reached the final of the Singapore Super Series event, having come through the qualifying. Event. She started the tournament as a 15-year-old. She turned 16 on finals day. She lost that final, of course. It was this tournament last year where Tai Su Ying won her first Super Series title. She's now added the Malaysian Super Series list of achievements. here in Tokyo, don't know which way to look. Japanese players involved in women's singles semi-finals in both courts. That's gone long. Yeah, good judgment. Game interval. They've gone to this youngster. Mm, that's a delightful cross court Five net four. shot from Five. Tai Su Ying. Five. How on earth did she control that? She takes it so late but plays it to perfection. with almost silence okay. from the fans. about, I can tell you, a sensational result on the adjoining court, Shizuka Uchida of Japan.
promoted from the qualifying events, has just beaten the former champion, former world number one, and former world champion Wang Yi Han in two straight games. So Japan have a finalist of the women's singles. Could it be an all Japanese final? here to just one solitary point. Do we dare to think the unthinkable? We certainly do. Oh, it's just wide. Wide by a whisker. Fire is over. 15, 13. She's probably one of the most deceptive players in the women's game, is Tyson Yu. Has a very relaxed, easy hitting motion, the overhead shots. In fact, any shot, look at that. Big swing of the racket, looks as if she's going to play a fast shot. And then at the last moment, just guides it across court. Super play, lovely skill. Now, what's the difference with that overhead between hitting straight down the line and playing cross court? I can't see it. All looks the same to me. How's an opponent supposed to know which way it's going? That's nice. Just missed it. Yeah, just using her, losing her mental discipline at the moment, the youngster. And that's quite understandable there. Her coach, Shodi Sato, former women's singles player, of course, turned 32 earlier this week. What a wonderful birthday present to see his young charge doing so well. Yamaguchi, she did. That's amazing. 5-4. Cool in a crisis. Game point. Seven. Game point opportunities. Three of them.
come on the line. Example. So, game point number four for Tai Sun Ying. Ooh. Well, a look from Tai Sun Ying to the umpire. She wasn't convinced oh. by it, nor was I. Let's have a look. Oh, no, good call, line judge. That was out. by Tai Su Ying, and all of a sudden, Yamaguchi has a game point herself. Pity as far as Yamaguchi is concerned. Here are on the return of serve, and now game point number five for Tai Su Ying. The line judge got that absolutely right. How can the umpire overrule on that far side of the court? Well, a little yeah. wry smile from Tai Su Ying. Oh, I slanted in. Goodness me, it's all happening here. Time is on. Well, game point number six for the number six seed. And a sixth time, a game point has come and gone.
now after saving six game points. Yamaguchi has a second game point herself. She's missed six. The opening game to the 16 year old qualifier. Twenty-six, twenty-four, having saved six game points, twenty minutes of dramatic and exciting badminton. Well, I have to say it's a questionable decision by umpire Choi J Kung from Korea to overrule a line call on a game point on the far side of the court from where he's sitting. but it doesn't alter the fact that the defending champion has missed opportunities in the opening game. What drama, what excitement. 32 years this tournament has been in existence. Never before has a home player won a title at the Yonex Open Japan. If the 16-year-old Akane Yamaguchi were to win this semi-final, it would set up an all-Japanese women's singles final tomorrow. They, of course, would be guaranteed a title win. to sound smug, but I wrote an article, in fact, three articles for the Yonex Open Japan Second website, game. and Double. I predicted that okay. history was in the making. Where we find out what Tai Su Ying is made of, whether she's got the character to come back, of course, as the defending One, champion. The pressure no. is on her. She's up against a, a schoolgirl. with a full pirouette. Two, three. Oh, it's a long way. Oh, she's missed another sitter. She oh, missed one at game one, point in the opening game. Two. This is woefully short. All she had to do was get it over and in.
Time is over. Three, five. through the qualifier. She's been on Five, court. Six. For over three hours. Where is Tai Su Yin? Just one hour, 18 minutes. You would have thought that it was the youngster from Japan who would be struggling the more, but she looks moving the better of the two, in all honesty. down to play the qualifying. She got promoted to the main draw. Yamaguchi yeah, on court at the moment to play the qualifying. And it looks at the moment as we will have an all Japanese winning singles final. advantage having already won the first well, I think the main thing for the coaches of Tai Su Ying is to get her to believe At the moment I think she's probably still reflecting back to what happened on that game points opportunity in the opening game when the umpire overruled the line judge. That was an extraordinary umpiring decision. As far as the defending champion is concerned, she's got to put any thoughts of injustice by umpires out of her mind. She's just got to focus on one point at a time. Because if she makes unforced errors like that, we will indeed have an all Japanese women's singles final.
perfect. Good awareness, good tactical awareness, good technique. Hesitation there from Yamaguchi. I think she could have left it, it would have gone wide. Su Ying gets a real run of points right now. In the sense that it will be too little too late. Yeah, that's nice. a home player. They're three points away from that weight being over. Young shoulders, two points away from making it an all Japanese women's singles final. No! Oh! It's going wide. Oh, it's come back in. Yeah. A little bit of drift in this arena. And even the line judge, first of all, indicated that she thought it was going out and then changed her mind and made the right decision in the end, I have to say. Precise. in the crowd. Oh, my goodness, what a proud nation. 
history is made. Akane Yamaguchi has beaten last year's champion. She's through to the final. She saved six game points in the opening game. 26, 24, 21, 14, the margin of her victory. And the 16 year old really has been the talking point all week here at the Yonix Open Japan. Well, history will be made tomorrow. History has been made today with Kanichi Targo, the first male player into the men's singles final from Japan. And tomorrow, Japan are guaranteed a title. What a day it's been. Well, goodness me, we all need a, a deep breath and a cup of tea after the excitement of that. But let's enjoy the highlights because we've got one more semi-final to come. There'll be men's doubles coming up very soon.
Well, my goodness.